Hey everyone, welcome back to your database design series. This video we're going to be talking about surrogate and natural keys. Alright, let me write that out. So we got sur I think I'm spelling this right by the way. Surrogate, and then we have a natural. Alright. So we talked about primary keys in the last video. That's as far as we'll get for defining a key. These are categories of primary keys. So we define a primary key, and then this is just kind of like a descriptive term. We don't have to define in our database surrogate primary key or natural primary key. This is more for database design to know like the difference between types of keys. Hopefully that makes clear sense. And if not, just stick with me. All right. Okay, so and up up to like all these key videos I've been doing, I've been using natural keys. Let's define a natural key first. It's very natural definition. It's something that's naturally in the table, something you naturally want to store. When you have a user's table, you naturally want to store the username and the email. Those can be used as natural keys because they fit all the requirements for a primary key and it's already in there. You don't have to make up something. You don't have to think of a column to add just for the sake of having a key. We want to be able to have a key for every single table, but sometimes the natural key is not very obvious or not so natural. So we want to try to find a natural key when we're using natural keys. Generally, when you create a database, so let's say this huge box is our database, Within this database, we have a bunch of tables, and then within each table, we have a bunch of columns and rows. See what I'm saying? So these are all connected in some funky way with uh, relationships. Well, when we define a database, typically, I mean, maybe not always, we want to try to either always use natural keys or always use surrogate keys, which are just made up keys. We don't want to kind of flip flop, switch, and I can't think of any other words because we want to try to keep it consistent otherwise people using the database are going to be confused is this a natural key or is this a surrogate key is this something that actually has real world value or is it just a made up number so uh, let's say we are using natural keys there are a couple problems with natural keys and this video will be explaining the difference between these two and then the next video will be talking about pros and cons of each basically so natural keys are what's naturally already in the table, something we wanted to store to begin with, right? The thing is, they have real world value, so your database might adapt, and the meaning of your keys kind of adapt too, which, once again, I'll explain that all in the next video. Surrogate keys, they are a column that's just added to your database, no matter what, even if you have a good natural key, because remember you want to either use all natural or all surrogate usually. So if I decide to use surrogate keys, I'm going to give an ID to every single row within every single table. So we have, let's say we have a, a user table, and then we have a sale table, and then we have a um, comment table. What we do is we give every single table an ID column. So we have a user ID column in the, sa in the user table. We have a sale ID column in the sale table. We have a comment ID in the comment table. So now when we have, like, let's look at the comment table in depth. We have the comments. We're going to have a column. We're going to have a column for the comment ID. And then we'll need a reference to the user that posted the comment. So we'll have the user ID as a foreign key, which points back to the user table. So that's kind of how that works. Now we just have random numbers. The ID is just a big number that has a feature known as auto increment. That means every single time you make a new row within this table, it's going to raise the ID by one. Then when you like delete columns or something and you have gaps within your numbers, it doesn't really matter because the number has no real world significance. Typically, surrogate keys are 
kept completely private. No one knows the surrogate key except for the people working with the database. You're not told your surrogate key. So if I created an account on a website, and then I put my username and my password, and then I go to like, I sign up, register, and do my email junk, and then I sign in and go to my user settings, it's not going to be like user ID equals 45 or whatever. It's going to be private. The reason for that is, is because the world doesn't have, I mean the, uh, the number doesn't have real world meaning. Therefore it's private to the database only. If I started giving that number out to everybody who has one of these IDs or, or something like that, or if I started putting it on sales reports, well then I'm giving that number real meaning in the world and it's starting to become a natural key. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Natural is something that's already in the database. Surrogate is something we just add. The thing that's kind of cool about surrogate is if you're struggling to find a really good natural key, you can always use a surrogate key. The uh, problem with that is you always want to try to be able to naturally make everything unique. Like in a user table, we have a username. That's going to keep things unique. So even if we use a surrogate key, we can still index this username, and that can be used sort of as if we assign it as a natural key. The only thing is we're making connections between tables using the surrogate key. So for this table, we could have a user ID, and then we could have a user name for just an example. The user ID would be the surrogate key. This would not be the natural key because we can only have one primary key and the primary key is going to be the type surrogate. So the user ID is a surrogate key, random number, generated number. The username, we can index it and use it like a natural key with, uh, when we search the database and everything. But we're not going to use it to make connections between tables and uh, references with foreign keys. So hopefully that makes things pretty clear. Next video I'll be talking about pros and cons of which one you want to use. Okay, so cool. Catch you guys in the next video and be sure to subscribe.